Hey everyone, it's Harry from Tiffany Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. In today's episode, I'm doing a brisket throwdown between a $220 Snake River Farms Wagyu American brisket against a choice grade brisket about $50. So it's a $220 versus $50 brisket throwdown. We're going to cook it very simply using my First Place USA beef rub, foil it with some uh, beef broth. Use a little bit of schmear to get started and cook it on a Weber Smoky Mountain 22 using some hickory and apple wood chunks. Right, before you start trimming, you need a sharp knife. I have a, a knife sharpener here called Rapid Steel, which I carry with me when I go on the road. A little a six inch boning knife from Forchner. And you run it about 10 times and you get a really, really sharp edge. The Snake River Farm Wagyu brisket comes like this. And uh, it's about 16 pounds, and we have a 16 pound Angus to compare. So here's a safety tip, once you remove the brisket from the back, you must make sure that you don't wash your meat and get rid of this purge, which is the uh, bloody liquid here. This is extremely toxic, so this goes straight into the trash. You want to just towel dry your brisket carefully. Since this is a brisket shootout, we want to keep the uh, seasonings very simply just to the rub and uh, I'm not going to go ahead and inject it or cook it uh, in a full on competition way. So we're just going to basically trim all the fat off the flat and uh, any money, any silver skin underneath we can trim off also because we want the rub to be able to touch the meat. You can see from the meat here, it's got beautiful marbling and striations. And uh, this is a beautiful cut of beef. This is American style Wagyu from Snake River Farms, which is based in uh, Idaho. And uh, they have really good online service to ship the beef to your home. This uh, beef brisket is about maybe $175 and with shipping, you're paying about maybe $230 shipped to your door. But uh, it's absolutely just beautiful and gorgeous. We are uh, as competitors like to cook a Wagyu for competition because it seems to, to do well. A Wagyu actually is a, a kind of a Japanese word. Wa is uh, Japanese and Yu is cow, so it's kind of Japanese cow. And uh, this uh, kind of cow is found in Japan and there's actually a red a kind of a Wagyu and a, a black Wagyu, like a Tajima. And uh, the one, the world famous one is called the Kobe beef, which is from the Kobe prefecture. But for the rest of the Japan, it's Wagyu beef. The uh, folks, uh, I think in America, or the breeders in America, started to bring this in about 20, 30 years ago. And now Wagyu is, is quite popular and common in America. You can buy it uh, online or go to a high-end butcher shop. Now, I'm going to keep the sim trim very simple. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the... Uh, fat layer between the point and the flat so I can get maximum burn ends to create those morsels of beef heaven. Cut some of the uh, eye fat out and cut away some of the fat on the back of the point muscle to create beautiful burnt ends. I've been to uh, different uh, Wagyu farms in Oregon in America to visit them because I'm always uh, interested in kind of like a farm to table story. I'll leave a link on my uh, description here of the, some of the blogs I've written when I travel to this farm to learn more about how the American Wagyu is raised. So in uh, this case here, the Wagyu pure bloodline from Japan uh, is not something that you find very often in America. You will find a crossbred, uh, kind of an American Wagyu like this one. The uh, difference is that they crossbreed it with uh, usually a local uh, breed like an Angus because the Angus is uh, much more hardy and suited to the American climate versus the uh, full-on purebred uh, Wagyu from Japan. The uh, meat is really uh, kind of a really very, very fatty and very beefy, uh, a little bit milder typically than an Angus, but very, very good eating. And as competitors, we love to cook with Wagyu because it seems to score higher. You can see uh, here uh, the kind of marbling you see on a Wagyu. Uh, beef here. Uh, Snake Real Farm sells two grades. So one is called a gold grade, which is a uh, more marbled, and uh, this one is a black grade, which is also excellent, excellent. The scoring for a Japanese uh, kind of style beef is uh, using the uh, BMS, which is a uh, is beef a uh, marbling scale, and the scale runs from one to twelve on the Japanese scale BMS. So this BMS scale on this particular American Wagyu is about a five or six. 
and uh, prime is about four or five. So it gives you the sense of uh, how marble the, the meat is. Look at the stri the, stri the marbling, the, which is the cross section, and the striations are the lines of the marbling viewed the other direction. So uh, people sometimes get confused when I say striations. Striations are kind of marbling uh, 90 degrees perpendicular. So uh, the marbling is the cross section, uh, the, the, the lines are the striations. So if I've confused you in my previous videos, I just want to clarify that's what I mean here. Wagyu beef is characterized by really soft, a luxurious flavor and texture. And uh, when you cook it up, there's a, you know, kind of a remarkable difference between the two. Okay, so this is kind of good enough. I'm gonna go move over to this side. I'm trying to go to leave as much of the meat on as possible. You've seen my six or seven, eight, nine, ten brisket videos already. I have like 50 brisket videos in my head, so I'm slowly letting them, letting them come out. So this one will be cooked very, very simply by a simple trim to preserve as much of the meat as possible. And uh, we're going to be able to kind of like cook it up and then uh, do a taste test. We'll trim the Angus exactly the same way, just a minimal trim. This is more of a backyard trim than a competition trim because I'm not trimming a lot of the meat away. Just gonna try to keep as much yield as we can, but trim it the same way. Same process as before, trimming away all the fat. And it's a lot easier if you put your hand underneath here to create a bowl. It's easy to trim off the fat layer this way. Trimming away all the surface fat here. Any part that has the fat, the rub is not going to be able to stick and uh, it won't have a lot of flavor. So you want to make sure you trim off all the fat and silver skin if you can. Always trim with your hand behind the blade. Don't put your hand here when you trim. Put your hand always behind the blade, just for safety purposes. Here. So I bow the meat, trim up this part. Both briskets are trimmed now and I'll run you through some of the differences uh, if they are not exactly obvious. So let's look at the uh, fatty muscle or the point where the burn end come from. So this is how the Angus one looks like. It's really pretty good. But if you look at the compared to the one from the Wagyu, uh, the Wagyu actually has uh, more marbling. So uh, you can see the difference here. I'll flip it over. You can see the back side of it. That's how that part looks. Nicely marbled. This one also nicely marbled. And uh, this is just a little bit more on this one here. On the flat, uh, you can't really tell much difference from the top, but you can actually see that uh, the Wagyu has more of these lines called striations because when you look across the cross section, this is where the marbling comes from. And you can compare the marbling here from the Angus against the marbling from the Wagyu, you can see more white flecks here. So it's actually more marble when you see across across the section. Uh, this would be more equivalent to a prime. So I'm cooking a $50 choice against a $220 Wagyu on the Beyond Prime. It's BMS scale about five or six, when Prime's about four on the Japanese BMS scale. Uh, both are about the same weight. So we're gonna season them up and uh, we'll cook it uh, as gently as we can. I like a low and slow, so I'm going to cook it around 250-ish and uh, about maybe 20, 10 to 14 hours to get the best result possible. So I can actually give you a straight, honest answer on the actual flavor, texture, tenderness, appearance, and taste between the $220 brisket and the $50 brisket. We start off the seasoning process with a little bit of schmear. I'm going to put a little bit of a Worcestershire to wet the meat so the rub will stick easier. This is optional, you don't have to use this. Some people you can use uh, also mustard, you can use a little bit of mayo, uh, a little bit of uh, water, it doesn't really matter. I just want to get kind of get my brisket a little bit wet. I want to also point out something I may not have told you before, but all right, so the schmear is on. Now to get my uh, my first place USA beef rub on, you apply the rub uh, on until the meat beneath becomes opaque. Uh, you want to apply the rub about maybe a six to 10 inches away, so that it's nice and even. You want to put a nice layer until the meat beneath cannot be seen. And that's the amount of layer. This is called now the single pat. Pat it down. You never rub a rub because for obvious reasons, when you rub a rub, it becomes uneven. So I cannot tell you how many times I taught my students, you know, to please do never rub a rub because it's going to make your meat uneven. We always say in competition, one missing shake of rub 
or one inconsistently applied area of your meat of the rub and you've lost a ten thousand dollar check for contest so you notice now it's gone uh kind of gone into the meat i'm gonna apply exactly the same amount of rub from muscle memory always shake your rub to loosen it before you apply it so that it appears nice and even so you shake it apply it from six to ten inches shake it apply some more you don't have to use my rub you can use salt and pepper i have like six or seven different brisket videos using different products including salt and pepper, so I teach you how to cook it with a kind of a Texas style salt and pepper. We're getting ready to set up the Weber Smoky Mountain 22 and this is the charcoal I like to use, the uh, Jealous Devil. We have the pit set up with the fire grate at the bottom with uh, a lot of uh, charcoal. We're gonna burn probably for about um, 8 to 10 hours on one load like that. Uh, the chunks of wood are underneath the charcoal, you can't see them but they're underneath. So I have about uh, 8 chunks of wood underneath uh, the coals. So. You never put the wood on top ever because uh, that doesn't do anything for your meat. Uh, as you can tell, there's a lot of different kinds of woods that you can buy. These are from uh, Patty Sharp from the woodshed in Orange County. She owns a uh, big uh, wood processing facility that provides wood for restaurants as well as uh, barbecue, pitmaster, backyard and competitors. And uh, if you watch my video called uh, Women Grand Champion Pitmaster, she's featured in it and she gives you a rundown on how to order the wood from her. Uh, she's been providing me wood for uh, many years now, so you know some of the best around. Uh, this is a barkless wood. Wood goes underneath the coals. As soon as the uh, coals light up, we're gonna dump it right in the middle. We're gonna let it get to happy, happy 250, 275 temperature until the crust sets. Probably take about 10 hours. The way the Weber Smoky Mountain 22 is set up is uh, I have uh, the one vent open on the bottom and one vent fully open on the top and that should allow me to get around 225. If the temperature is too low, you can go ahead and open up the back vents uh, just about half so you get uh, two halves in the back and one full open in the front. That should get you the temperature you need. I foil my water pan with foil because I like to cook dry and I apply moisture using my own spray bottle because that allows me to control the moisture content a little bit better. I'm gonna put one brisket on the bottom rack and another one on the top rack. So uh, you've seen me do this trick before on my videos. I put a piece of wood at the bottom so that when I put the uh, brisket on, it'll prop up my brisket so that it will form a dome shape and allow the liquid to drain out to create perfect bark. One brisket is at the bottom. I think this is the uh, Angus brisket. I'm gonna add now the uh, one from the Wagyu on top. And both briskets are in the uh, 22. We have the Angus at the bottom and the uh, Wagyu on the top. Put the lid back on. And uh, I like to let the wrap temperature ramp up faster. So I'll show you my little pebble trick here. All you need to do is uh, put a little pebble, leave it a jar, let it breathe better. And uh, you come up the temp a lot faster. It's been about four hours and uh, let's take a look at how it's doing. Coming along nicely. Spray some water. It's been about eight hours at around 250 degrees and the crust has set so you can tell by performing the scratch test. So if I touch it, the rub will not fall off. So that's one is the Angus. This one is the uh, Wagyu, same thing. So the crust has set nicely. Once you perform the scratch test and the crust has not fallen off, it's time for you to move to the next phase, which is to wrap in foil. We're gonna keep it very simple this time. We're just gonna wrap it and put some uh, mop on it. I'm just gonna use plain old beef broth from the can. Nothing very special. And then uh, we're gonna slowly, like I showed you in the black belt trick in my previous videos, to rehydrate the brisket. So watch what happens here. I'll see I put the liquid on. It absorbs so you have to just take the time slowly rehydrate your brisket get all that wonderful liquid back into the brisket so that you can rehydrate it and uh, this is some of the black belt tricks I've shown you in previous videos so you put the mop on now and your rub falls off and then you made a fatal mistake and uh, your brisket hasn't passed the scratch test yet and uh, the rub is gonna fall off, so you're not gonna get any much of a bark or flavor. This is vitally important that you make sure that the crust is set. The crust is a mala reaction, and uh, it's the non-enzymatic browning of amino acids for those of you who are super nerdy. But uh, 
it creates thousands of new flavor compounds that will allow your brisket to have amazing, amazing flavor. But you need to know how to fuse the rub and the seasoning to the protein to generate thousands of new uh, flavor chemicals. Now we're gonna change cooking techniques now and uh, we're gonna wrap it in foil. Let it cook until it's just reached perfect tenderness. ready to go in back into the pit at 250 or you can put it in the oven whatever is easier we'll do the same now for the angus brisket after you foil you can uh, go ahead and put it in the pit or in the oven i'm going to put mine in the oven because it's a lot easier and i don't have to watch it that much both briskets are done and i can tell because the temperature is around 206 or 7 and it feels probe tender. So don't rely on the temperature, rely more on feel. So uh, the correct feel for the tenderness for the uh, brisket feels like you're poking through a uh, jar of peanut butter. So if you can, if you want to, you can get another probe, poke the peanut butter and use the same probe and poke uh, the uh, brisket. This is a black belt trick I teach my students so that you can get your brisket right into the competition tenderness zone. After the brisket is cooked, it's uh, very important to vent it to, pre to uh, prevent uh, or minimize any residual cooking. Because once the brisket is done, you want to cut it open so that it has a chance to vent. I call this the alien flap because I'm a fan of the movie Aliens. So it kind of looks like uh, the little creatures ready to jump onto your face. After 12 hours, uh, our briskets are ready. This is the Angus on the left here. And uh, this is the uh, Snake River Farms Wagyu brisket on the right. So two twenty on this side and fifty dollars on this side. We're gonna do a taste test now to see what's the difference between a two hundred twenty dollar brisket and a fifty dollar brisket. Okay, we are ready now to do a taste test. Let me go ahead and do a pull test. Make sure the tenderness is perfect. Beautiful accordion drape here. Look at that. And I'm gonna pull it. And it comes it off perfectly. So the tenderness is absolutely perfect on this one. Let's try the Wagyu. Same here. Look at fold. Nice accordion fold. Pull it. And it's just absolutely tender. So tenderness, both are a 9. Appearance, uh, I would give it a 9. Beautiful smoke ring. See how deep it is. And look at the uh, smoke ring on the burn ends here. Also equally good. On both sides, this is the Angus. And this is the... Snake River. So my son is here, he got back from work, so we're gonna give you a taste test. So I'm gonna start eating now. And then of course beans. You want some too? So we'll eat the flat and eat the burn ends, which are these little morsels of beef heaven. Cheers. So Angus is pretty good. One on this side, Wagyu Angus. Of course, as I'm trying to eat the uh, brisket, uh, Mr. Beans has been jumping on my leg. Right, Mr. Beans? You want some brisket also? Which one do you think you like better, Beans? Stay. Here you go. Stay. All right, good boy. I've had a chance to eat my way through two rounds, eating the burn end of the Angus and the burn end of the Wagyu, as well as the slices from the flat or the lean area for the Wagyu as well as the Angus. So here's my overall impression. First observation, color and the smoke ring is on par. So this is pretty good. So this is pretty good. Just good technique on the pit gives you this kind of results. Appearance, I would say it's a tie. Now let's go and look at the way the Angus beef uh, kind of uh, structure is like. You notice here, right? The grain structure is a little bit coarser than the grain structure of the Wagyu, which is much finer. So that affects your mouth feel. So in terms of uh, mouth feel, this one is less smooth than this. Now, that's a subjective call because some people like kind of a smooth, kind of soft, tender brisket. Some people prefer kind of a more, how say, coarse texture. In terms of flavor, both exhibits really good beefiness. Uh, this one is, is kind of strong beef, and this is milder but more complex. So you have to decide what your favorite is going to be because this is really complex and a little bit sort of like understated.
This is not so complex, but very beefy. So again, if you're a KCBS certified judge, you have to decide which one you will score higher. In terms of the mouthfeel, the Wagyu has an excellent mouthfeel. It's super soft and oily because of the marbling. And uh, it's got a, like, like a, what I call an unctuous little flavor, a little bit of a kind of a beef slipperiness or beef uh, softness that you cannot get from a Angus beef. So these are two different kinds of animals, two different kinds of tasting results. Even though they look kind of the same in the, the turning box in a contest, the taste is going to be absolutely different. The mouthfeel is absolutely different. The $50 question is which one's better? Uh, it depends. If you enjoy sort of a traditional beef flavor that is uh, very beefy, has a coarseness to the bite, then you would pick the Angus. But if you like a kind of a smoother feel, a little bit more oily, unctuous, soft and mellow, complex, a little bit understated, the Wagyu is the pick. Wagyu seems to consistently score higher. I'm not sure why. Uh, if I eat it side by side, uh, I actually really like the Angus uh, on some days. And on some days, I prefer the smooth taste and texture of the Wagyu. Now, this is $220 and this is $50. So the question that everybody's going to ask me is, that, hey, is this worth four times the price? The answer obviously is no. The incremental differences is maybe 5 to 10% between the two. It's a matter down of preference. All right, this concludes another episode from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue. We show you guys how a $50 brisket Angus fared against a $220 Wagyu brisket. So we, I hope you like this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And until the next video, we will see ya.